Hi everyone, welcome to Paw Paw's Workshop. You know, for a long time I've been wanting to make a vacuum table for the X-Car. Well, today I finally did. Let me show you how I did it. Let's get started. To begin making this vacuum table, what I've done is open a new window in uh, Easel software and I have the material size that is set for 21 inches by 15 inches. I'm going to open up this window so that you can see it because this is actually fairly new. I'm doing two stage carving to be able to accomplish this. The first bit that I'm going to be using is a quarter inch down cut spiral bit. And then the detail bit that I'm going to use is going to be an eighth inch down cut bit as well. Okay, to begin this process, I'm going to select a rectangle. And I'm going to change the size of this rectangle. And I want this shape to be, now I know my board is 21, so we're going to make the width of this 20 inches. And I know that it is on the y-axis 15, so we'll make this 14 inches for on my y-axis. And I also want to make the depth of cut. We'll get that taken care of right now at a 0.3. Now let's work on the grid, and I'll pull in a new rectangle for this. What I'm going to do is set my size for my shape at three quarters of an inch square. So I've locked this and I'm going to select this at 0.75 of an inch. And what that does, that creates now, since this is locked, 75.75 inches by 0.75 inches. What I'm going to do is just slide it up here and I'm going to use my grid to be able to actually put it into position. But to, before I do that, what I'm going to do is copy and paste a bunch of these because I'm going to create one row and then I'm going to copy and duplicate that down successively until I have all the rows that I want. So at this point, I'm going to hit Control C and then Control V, Control V, Control V. And I'm going to do that a number of times all the way across. So I'm going to take this first one. And we're just going to bring it over to here right now. And I want to set it up where the corner is right on the corner of this grid. So this is at the 14. And this is my 20. So to do that, I want to highlight this top right hand corner. And we're going to set this at 20. And this one will be at 14. Now that has that exactly in that corner. And I'm going to slide over. And we're going to do the same thing. This time it will be 19 by the 14. Okay, and I'll continue this process. This time, it'll be 18 and 14. Now then, I'm going to continue this process all the way across the page. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to copy, for an example, this row. And I can hit Control c and control V and I'll be able to slide that right down to the next row. That's how we're going to do that. I would do the same thing. This would be at my 20 and this would be at 13. 
Okay, that will create my grid. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my entire sheet when I get done and I'm going to select the cut and I'm going to bring this up to zero cut. And then when I swing back and drag in my pocket, you can see the results. That's how it's going to look. So I'm going to take a few minutes off camera and get this grid put together and I'm going to show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, this is the grid completely done and it took about oh, five, six minutes to be able to do this. It didn't take long. Now then, the other thing that I wanted to do down here at the bottom, I just put in a box and what I did, I just came up here so made a box, extended it out long enough to be able to cover the whole entire thing. And then I selected this little arm right here and rotated it. And I actually rotated it a specific degree. I changed it to 15 degrees. So that would be 345. And then from there, I just slid it right up in place and I made that at a zero cut. So that tells you how I did that angle. And I did the same thing on the other side. This is going to be the hole for the vacuum hose. And that is going to get cut all the way through. Let's do a detailed preview. And that's what it will look like. On the detail pass, when I cut this, I am going to increase this feed rate to 50 inches a minute. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. Something I want you to notice here in this preview, you see this right here, that would indicate that that box is not actually set at a zero depth. And that's why I always do the preview before I cut it. And if you look at that, that was not quite at the zero. It had a point zero zero two five three in there and that's the reason it was showing a very slight cut line. Okay, the bit that I'm gonna use for the roughing pass is nothing more than a quarter inch down cut bit, so it should give a nice clean pocket. And also this was just picked up at the big box stores. When you're going through the checklist and you're doing two stage carving, it will ask you to choose the path type. In this case, I am doing the roughing pass, so I am gonna just click continue. Now I did not preset the X, Y, zero axis because I did the Z probe in the center of the workpiece. So now I'm gonna go ahead and set the Z axis down at the bottom left-hand corner. And it's important to note, and I've had this question asked before, where is the actual point? Well, the center of the bit is the X, Y, X, zero point. So this is a quarter inch bit. So I have to be able to set the X, Y axis at the center of that bit. I'm not sure I can get a good angle of that, but that is exactly where the bit is sitting, center of it. And if I pan around to the other side, You'll be able to see, if I turn this bit, that that is exactly in the center of the bit going that direction. Okay, so now we're ready to carve. And no, I'm not going to have you watch a boring process of cutting a great big pocket. The roughing pass is complete, and it completed the outside border. It also completed this bottom section where the hose 
where the vacuum cleaner is going to go and it went right back to my XY0. I'm going through the checklist in preparation to carve the detail pass and I just wanted to show you this. It brings up the roughing pass bit that was used and it also has a separate area for the detail. So you want to make sure that you select the eighth inch bit. Now for my case I'm using an eighth inch down cut but this will be just fine. I could select either one of the eighth inch bits. I'm just going to go ahead and use the eighth inch up cut. To set the Z axis, I couldn't do it over the XY zero point and I wanted to do it very close to where I had done it the first time. So what I did is I moved it up eight inches up on the Y axis and I moved it eight inches over on the X axis. Okay, the Z axis is now complete, so it is set. And the next step on the checklist is to set the XY. And I know exactly where to go, so I'm gonna go back my eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'll move down my Y axis eight inches. <laughs> exactly back to where I was to begin with when I did the roughing pass. The boring part to watch it cut all of the little individual squares and no I'm not going to bore you with having to sit through and watch all of that but you can see it's very effective and it does some very clean cut for the two-stage carving. To cut the hole, it does cut air to begin with before reaching the surface of the material. Okay, the vacuum table is now finished. And I wanted to go through and show you a couple of things. On this two-stage carving, this is very, very clean. And it's very detailed. I'm going to try to get up really close. I want to give a quick look at the hose. The hose fits in there exactly the way it should. I cut a piece of the MDF to go on top of the vacuum table. This also acts as a bump stop. The 3x5 cards are used to cover the remaining of the uh, vacuum table. I also leave one pocket open so it does not put excess stress on the vacuum cleaner. Now that I've started carving, we can test it out and you can see the results are there. It works perfect. I'm very happy with the results of this. And it's important to note too that that MDF is not secured in any way other than the pressure from the vacuum hose holding it in place. I wanted to zoom in so that you can see the process and how well this is working. There's no movement at all. So very, very pleased with this whole operation. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.